Hello, I'm Brian Atkinson and welcome once again to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall be covering the flight engineer's position within the Avro Lancaster bomber. We'll be looking at the flight engineer's instrument panel and other tasks the flight engineer will carry out on operations. We shall be referring to various 1944 Air Ministry manuals. I hope you find this interesting. The flight engineer was a vital member of a Lancaster crew. Introduced by Bomber Command during 1942, the flight engineer would be technically minded and trained to understand the aircraft's various engine, fuel and electrical systems. His tasks would include assisting the pilot during start-up and take-off, and continually monitoring the engines, propeller and electrical systems. During operations, his job was to ensure the aircraft was functioning correctly and in an emergency, quickly determine the correct course of action. Many flight engineers also were able to take over flying the aircraft in an emergency. The flight engineer's position is located to the right of the pilot's seat with his instrument panel and seat mounted on the starboard side of the cockpit. The flight engineer's seat is a folding structure supported on the starboard side of the fuselage. The seat itself is built on a plywood base padded with sponge rubber. The base is stiffened by two inverted U-section members onto which two bearer tubes are welded. A support frame at the outer edge of the seat holds the seat in a horizontal position and when the seat is folded vertically upwards, this frame slides in a slot in the seat support members. The backrest for the seat is a strap of canvas webbing, bolted to an eye bolt on the cockpit rail and to the pilot's seat. The attachment at the pilot's seat is detachable so that when the seat is in the stow position, the backrest can be folded down to the back of the seat. A tubular footrest is fitted in sliding bearings on the underside of the pilot's floor and when not in use can be slid beneath the pilot's floor. The flight engineer's instrument panel is hinged at its lower edge and secured at its upper edge to the starboard cockpit rail. There are two main types of instrument panel. We shall first look at the standard panel fitted on Lancaster B Mark I and III aircraft. On this panel are the following. Switches for the electric pumps in the fuel tanks. The oil dilution buttons. And a switch for the heated pressure head. Here are the fuel pressure warning lamps. The fuel contents gauges switch is located here. These are the fuel contents gauges. And here are the gauges for the oil pressure. and the oil temperature and the coolant temperature. Here are the control hand wheels for the fuel tank selector cocks that project through holes in the panel. There is also a panel lamp and an inspection lamp socket at the lower right. On the left side of the panel is the emergency air control, used as part of the emergency system for lowering the undercarriage and flaps. The six fuel contents gauges show the amount of fuel in each tank 
when the switch below the gauge is in the on position. A correction card for the readings when the aircraft is in the tail down position is fitted on the panel. The fuel pressure warning lamps and the fuel contents gauges are controlled by the same switch and they should always be left on in flight. And now for a look at the Canadian built Lancaster B Mark 10 panel. On the panel are the following. Switches for the electric fuel booster pumps in the fuel tanks. The oil dilution buttons. Here are the oil pressure gauges. And here are the oil temperature and coolant temperature gauges. These are the fuel pressure gauges. And finally, we have the fuel contents gauges. Here are the control hand wheels for the fuel tank selector cocks that also project through the holes in the panel. There is also a panel lamp and an inspection lamp socket at the lower right. On the left of the panel is the emergency air control. You will notice that this type of panel does not have the fuel pressure warning lamps, a fuel contents gauges switch or the switch for the heated pressure head. The Imperial War Museum's Lancaster B Mark 10 KB889 is fitted with an alternative later type two part panel that differs from the wartime Mark 10 panel. The left panel providing the gauges and the right the main updated flight engineers panel. KB889 left the UK and returned to Canada in June 1945 and was later converted for use in the maritime reconnaissance role. It could be that this new two-part panel was fitted during that conversion as it does include the icing controls. If anyone can offer any further information please write it down in the comments below. The panel is the General Electric type DJ22 24 volt engine gauge panel. The panel is located on the left hand side of the main flight engineers panel. The engine gauges are all very well marked and are colour coded to aid quick reading by the flight engineer. There is also an inspection lamp fitted at the top of the panel. Here is a view of the gauges panel. At the top are the oil pressure gauges. Then we have the gauges for oil temperature. Here's the coolant temperature gauges. And here are the gauges for fuel pressure. And finally, the fuel contents gauges. We'll now look at KB889's main flight engineers panel. Moving on, with all Lancasters, the flight engineer is also responsible for the fuel crossfeed cock that is mounted on the floor just forward of the front spar, with the control handle visible through the front spar cover. The flight engineer would also use the electrical services panel, which is mounted on the starboard side of the fuselage, just forward of the front spar. On the main panel face are the ammeters and voltmeter for both the port and starboard generators, and switches controlling the headlamp and the colour of the wingtip recognition lamps, with the addition of two earth warning lamps. Inside the panel 
are the split negative switches and the majority of the fuses. If a circuit becomes faulty or an earth is indicated by unequal brightness of the warning lamps, the circuit can be isolated by turning off the relevant split negative switch. If you would like more in-depth coverage of the flight engineer's task, you can have a look at my Lancaster fuel system and emergencies video in this series. I'll put a link to them at the end of the video. Well that's it for this video. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and please subscribe. And also click the bell. Remember it's free and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.